only way to learn how to juggle is by practicing. The only way to learn math is by practicing. Okay, what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about quadratics or conic sections. If you have a cone like this, it provides four conics. The first is if you cut it straight across, it'll give you a circle. If you change that plane to a steeper angle, it'll give you an ellipse. A steeper angle yet will give you a parabola, and that's what we're going to talk about today, or parabolas. And then the fourth one is if you had two cones back to back and cut it this way with the plane, it'll give you a hyperbola. But today we're just going to talk about parabolas uh, that have a lot of applications. Like the headlight on your car is a parabola. The St. Louis arch is a parabola. Everything is drawn on our Cartesian coordinate system where the horizontal axis is x, the vertical axis is y, and the first quadratic or parabola I'm going to look at is y equals x squared. If I don't know how to graph that, I could just set up a t-bar, x and y. When x is 0, y is 0, so it goes through the origin. When x is 1 or negative 1, y is still positive 1. When x is negative 2 or 2, 2 squared is 4, negative 2 squared is 4. So I could see it's symmetrical on that y-axis. It's increasing at an increasing rate. This point right here is called the vertex. And the line down the middle is the line of symmetry. The line of symmetry needs to have an equation. It's crossing the x-axis at 0. So that line of symmetry would be x equals 0. If, on the other hand, I had the equation y equals negative x squared, order of operations is exponents before multiplication. So I'd still take those values, square them, and then multiply by negative 1. So if I were to do that, I'd take a 0, plug it in, it'd be 0. Take a negative 1, square it 1 times negative would make this negative and that negative, that negative and that negative. I would have the same parabola, but it would open downward. So y equals negative x squared is the same parabola. However, it's opening downwards. A couple more scenarios is I could reverse inverse function my x's and y's and have x equals y squared. If I have x equals y squared, it's going to be the same thing. However, no matter what happens, whatever I plug y in, I'm going to square it. It'll always be positive. So x equals y squared is going to look like that or like that right there. Right. So there's my parabola opening to the right. And then the fourth case scenario is if I had x equals negative y squared, whatever value I have for y squared would then be negative, making my x's negative. So x equals negative y squared would open that way out. So that's how we're going to start looking at these parabolas. And we're going to open them up, which is called dilation. And then we're going to move them around. But you want to look at the parent graph first. Is it y equals x squared? Is it x equals y squared? Is it opening up or down based on the negatives? These are also quadratics. So a quadratic, whoops, let me change colors. A quadratic is in the general form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And there are three ways to solve quadratics. One is factoring. One is completing the square, and one is a quadratic formula. And we're going to go towards that. But the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at this quadratic and get a general form for graphing these parabolas as a quadratic. OK, so here's a general equation for a quadratic. And what we're going to do is we're going to put it in this form right here to graph them. So again, you want to look at that parent graph first. y equals x squared up, negative x squared reflection down. This is that same parabola centered 
at the point H K. And this is for all those conics, it'll be the same. It is now going to be centered at the point H K, where this is going to give me my horizontal shift transformation, and this is going to give me my vertical shift. That H, note that that's a negative. So if I have Y equals X minus 3 quantity squared, that's Y equals X squared. I know it's a parabola opening up. However, this is a horizontal shift. This is X minus 3 plus 0. It is centered at the point 3, 0. So I go over 1, 2, 3. I go up 0. And there's my parabola. If, on the other hand, it was not plus 0, it was plus 4, remember the general equation is negative, so this is a parabola centered at the coordinate 3, 4. y equals x squared, opening up. So now I go over 3, I go up 4, there's my new vertex, and then it opens up from there. So again, this is the general equation of a quadratic. This is a general equation of graphing a parabola centered at the point hk, noting that's a negative value. So if this is x plus 3, right? So if it were now x plus 3 plus 4, this is going to reverse it. So this is going to be a negative 3. So it is now centered at negative 3, 4. It is still y equals x squared, so it still opens up this way. So the line of symmetry on this red parabola right here, it has to be the equation of a line. It is a vertical line through the x-axis. So the line of symmetry through this parabola is x equals negative 3. Again, arrows on both ends to say that it's infinite. So we have the ability to reflect it, the first section, by putting a negative in the front. It takes it from above to down. Then we have the ability to translate it, meaning move it over. And we're going to move the new vertex over hk with x minus h plus k. So let's just do one right here. Sketch this graph out right here. The function x minus 5 quantity squared minus 2. So you know this is a parabola. f of x and y are interchangeable because it says y equals x squared. So I know this is going to be a parabola centered at the point 5. I go up negative 2. There's my vertex. It's opening up. My line of symmetry is this line right here, x equals 5. So there's my line of symmetry. It's centered at the coordinate 5, negative 2. Lastly, let me go over how this A affects the overall shape of the parabola. So let's just get a general parabola y equals x squared. And we know that's going to be a parabola opening up, centered at the origin. I get the idea what it looks like by picking those values, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2. So that's what it looks like right there. Now, if we were to put an A value out in the front of it, How's that going to dilate it? So let's say this is a 5 out in front. I'm going to still do my order of operation square first and then multiply by a 5. So rather than negative 2, I plug that in here, get 4, and then 4 times 5 is 20. 1 times 5 is 5, still goes through the origin. 1 squared times 5. So I can see it's still opening up. All my y values will still be positive. The only difference is now that when I go over 5, I go up 
20. So I could see it's going to go a lot steeper this way. If this is a fractional value, it'll be a lot further open that way.